Throughout the centuries, Tibet has produced some of the finest spiritual masters of Buddhism. We go now to Tibet to view the most recent activities of one of the greatest spiritual leaders in the world, His Holiness the Gyalwa Karmapa, who has voluntarily chosen to take birth back in his home country of Tibet once again, to promote the activity and growth of the Buddha Dharma and revive this ancient and profound tradition. Here at the Potala, the ancient seat and home of the Dalai Lama, is where the government of Old Tibet was run for centuries. This is Supu Monastery today, which was constructed over 880 years ago and has always been the main seat of all the Gyalwa Karmapas and the home of the practiced lineage of the Karma Kamsang in the Dovo Valley. The Karmapa himself once stated, This monastery of Surpu in the Dovo Valley is without equal in this world of ours. For one who sees or visits or even thinks of it just once, the misdeeds and obscurations of eons will surely be dispelled. Surpu is at an altitude of 4,600 meters and is about a two-hour drive from Tibet's capital city, Lhasa. It was completely destroyed in the Cultural Revolution, but has been almost completely rebuilt since 1984. His Holiness the 17th Karmapa, Urgen Chinli Dorje, in his main residence at Surpu Monastery. His Holiness the Karmapa is giving blessings in a tent where every year he spends some time in the summer months in the upper gardens at Surpu. He was born in eastern Tibet in June of 1985 amidst special auspicious signs and occurrences. His Holiness the Karmapa is the crown jewel of all advanced scholars and practitioners of Tibet. Buddha Shakyamuni foretold 2,000 years after he himself passed into Nirvana, Buddhism would spread in the snowy country of Tibet and all the people would become devoted to Avalokiteshvara, the embodiment of compassion. 
At this time, when the country was beginning to practice the teachings of Chenrezig, a bodhisattva would appear who would be as powerful as the lion's roar, and he would bear the name Karmapa. Because of his tremendous outstanding qualities, he has the capacity to benefit all living beings. The Buddha also said that the Karmapa would continue to incarnate throughout the time of a thousand Buddhas yet to come, and predicted that the Buddha activity and emanations of His Holiness the Karmapa would be ceaseless. Beings who have the opportunity to meet Him will be purified of their obscurations from seven previous rebirths. Karmapa is considered the embodiment of Buddha activity and of the Mahamudra teachings. The Karmapas were the first incarnate lamas ever to be recognized as such in Tibet. The first Karmapa's name was Dusum Kempa, which literally means the knower of the three times. Since then, the Karmapas have been recognized by each one leaving a written letter with a close disciple before leaving his body. This letter would usually include the name of the parents, the direction of where the door would be facing, the physical descriptions of the environment, and other important details. Here the Karmapa is receiving many Taiwanese guests. Two important sponsors and devotees are Dr. Chen and Miss Sun, who have volunteered upon the Karmapa's request to organize a project to construct a new paved cement road to Surpu Monastery from the main highway. His Holiness often spends time in the lower summer garden where he is seen now giving blessings to the Hua Yu Foundation group from Taiwan. The foundation and its directors, Dr. Chen and Ms. Sun, have been raising funds to start the construction of the new road and have been inviting groups from Taiwan to meet with the Karmapa. Karmapa's deer was offered to him by a devoted disciple from Kham. In previous times, the Karmapa's many animals were also kept in this place. The previous Karmapa spent most of his early life at Serpu. Here are scenes of the 16th Karmapa, Rangjung Rikpi Dorje, in the United States, performing the famous Vajra Crown or Black Hat Ceremony. This sacred crown represents the invisible celestial crown that was woven from the hair of 13 million Dakinis. This crown is always above the Karmapa's head. An identical replica of this celestial crown seen here was offered to the 5th Karmapa by the Chinese Emperor Yung Lo. His Holiness the 16th Karmapa in New York, he is speaking about the origins of the Karju lineage. Mm -hmm. Mr. Gokabaki is a good 
The present Karmapa has been receiving teachings of the lineage since he first arrived at Serpu in 1992. Here he is seen at his enthronement ceremony at Serpu on September 27, 1992. His Eminence Thai Rinpoche performs the main traditional part of the 17th Karmapa's enthronement ceremony. On June 3, 1992, His Holiness the Dalai Lama gave his official recognition of the true reincarnation of the 17th Karmapa. He explains the basis for his recognition and his vision. So what, what usually I do, you see, I do not, you see, they're relying on just one or two, you see, the test. So you see, I uh, proceed some, my usual method regarding as the, the choosing reincarnation. Then the indication is positive. So then I decided. Okay, that's good. I got some kind of uh, one dream. The, 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 the location, the area where, where you see, the present is the Kababa is born. Now one valley is the naturally, is the, 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 because of the, the stones and the Pang. Lawns. Lawns. It looks to say high altitude. And then facing the south. And there's some stream, small, you see, beautiful streams. Uh, and that, that is the main, you see, main sort of uh, the, the picture. There's someone there and told me, uh, actually, you see, without without his phone, this is this someone, uh, some source, you see, they, telling to me, oh, this is the place where Kamapa is born. This red book offered to the Karmapa at the time of his enthronement by the head representative of the Ministry of the Religious Affairs in Beijing is the official state seal of approval of the recognition and enthronement of the 17th Gyalwa Karmapa. This minister also gave his assurance of the government's intention of supporting religious freedom in China. Over 20,000 people from all parts of Tibet and the world came to witness this grand event and to receive the Karmapa's blessing. The Buddha Shakyamuni predicted that the lion-voiced Bodhisattva Karmapa would appear in this world and he would benefit many beings who could be liberated simply by hearing, seeing, or thinking of the Karmapa. Karmapa will be the sixth Buddha of the age. Buddha Simha, the lion. Here we witness the Karmapa's first teaching to ever be filmed, as now the lion begins to roar the profound truth of the Buddhist Dharma teachings to the world. Today you have all come from far away and I am very grateful that you have come to Serpu. Thank you.
So as you wished, I have given you the transmission of the Chenrezig Sadhana and the refuge. With a pure intention, you wish to construct the road to Serpu Monastery. By doing so, you accumulate merits in all your lives and a pure field of the qualities of the Buddha, Dharma, and Sangha. In your previous lives, you have accumulated good karma and have prayed effectively. It is important that you develop compassion, loving kindness, and bodhicitta for all sentient beings. To become a Buddhist, one should know to first take refuge in the Three Jewels. And from then on, one should take refuge in the Buddha and no longer seek refuge in worldly deities. Once you have taken refuge in the Dharma, you should not harm sentient beings. As it is taught in the Bodhisattva Arvacharya, one should practice the six paramitas. Through the six paramitas, one should reach the ten bhumis. However, it is extremely difficult to achieve the level of the tenth bhumi because in order to reach the first bhumi called great happiness, one must realize emptiness. We accumulate very positive karma, but if we accumulate very negative karma also, the two being of equal force neutralize each other, thus it prevents us from realizing emptiness. So at the beginning, when we learn the Buddha Dharma, it is very important to practice compassion for sentient beings. Just as Tibetan people make butter by churning the milk, after churning the milk of the Holy Dharma, one extracts the quintessence of Dharma as the butter. Just as we feel happy when we are in good health and have no disease, in the same way it is important to develop compassion for sentient beings and to eliminate their sufferings. So the refuge in the Sangha is like having a friend who leads us on the path of positive behavior, avoiding the path of negative behavior.
It is like when we want to cross a river, the Buddha represents the other side, which one wants to reach. The Dharma is the boat and the Sangha is a sailor. One can reach enlightenment thanks to the three jewels. Whether in Tibet, the land of the snows, or anywhere in the world, all sentient beings who want to follow the path of Buddhism should first take refuge. There is no other way except the refuge in the Buddha, Dharma, and Sangha. Even if someone would spread this idea on the radio that he is a Buddhist, without knowing refuge, he would not be considered a Buddhist. Having understood the sacredness of the three jewels and a bodhicitta, one should put them into practice. Just like if one has a beautiful car, it is useless to leave it in the parking lot and not drive it. Finally, I wish you and your family good health. I also wish that in your home country you won't even hear the words of disease, wars, or famine. Other activities of the Karmapa include the performance of the annual Lama dances, in which he often participates as seen here. It is a rare blessing to be able to watch these special dances that invoke the energy of blessing and protection. An elaborate ceremony is performed beforehand and precise meditation visualizations are completed before the actual dances are performed and the general public is invited to watch.
Karmapa often comes out on his roof balcony to relax from the intense schedule that often consists of studying, praying, greeting people and imparting daily blessings to often hundreds of people that visit Surpu Monastery daily. Long, long ago, during the time of the second Buddha, Deyong K. Gyalpo, there was a powerful king who had a younger son whose name was Prince Chugi Lodro. This prince went to the top of a mountain and meditated there for a hundred million years. Having meditated there for so long, the Dakinis were extremely inspired by him and they gathered around and as a gesture of inspiration and respect, each of the 13 million Dakinis offered a strand of their hair and wove the sacred black Vajra crown with them. In another sutra of the Buddha, it is said that in a hundred million realms, a hundred million Karmapas will incarnate. It is said that in our world, there is only one Karmapa at a time and he is self-recognized. The Karmapa studies, recites prayers, and often receives Dharma teachings daily. He also meets periodically with his various teachers and other monks to recite and memorize texts and sometimes is involved in debating sessions. Debating the philosophical views of the Buddhist teachings has been a tradition passed down for centuries in the Karju tradition as well as in the other schools of Tibetan Buddhism. Here we see the Karmapa himself debating, which is quite a rare sight. In the words of the Dalai Lama, wit is an important part of the debates and high merits are earned by turning your opponent's assumptions to your own humorous advantage, making it a popular form of entertainment for the participants as well as the viewers. The debates keep the mind sharp, clear, and very awake, and often turn out to be quite lively. Karmapa has given many empowerments or wongs during his years at Surpu Monastery. Here we witness some scenes from the various empowerments he has given. Karmapa often gives empowerments such as Guru Rinpoche, Chen Rezi, Green and White Tara, Amitayas, Medicine Buddha and others.
Here are Karmapa's parents, who often visit as they now have a home in Lhasa, as well as their original home in eastern Tibet, which is near the Karmapa's birthplace. Often when large multitudes of people come for a particular event, such as the annual Lama dances or the annual unfoldment of the great Surputanka, Karmapa will give public empowerments while he is seated on the top floor of the monastery. On some of these special holy days, he has imparted his blessings to over 10,000 people in one day.
The 17th Karmapa recently taught, compassion for all sentient beings is the wish to liberate them from all the kinds of problems and sufferings in the ocean of samsara. All these beings have been my mothers, and all have loved me and cared for me as my mother, and I myself personally would like to help them to become liberated from all their sufferings. That is compassion. Here at Pulahari Monastery in Nepal is His Eminence the 4th Jamun Kanto Rinpoche. Seen here with him is the Venerable 4th Dopo Shelri Rinpoche, also recently recognized by the 17th Karmapa. On November 17, 1997, when he came to Nepal, more than a thousand monks and nuns formed a procession to welcome him home to his monastery in Pulahari, Nepal, where he is now residing. Beautiful rainbows appeared all through the day of his arrival and often appeared wherever he traveled. The Karmapa wrote a precise detailed letter describing where to find His Eminence the 4th Jamgun Control and he talked to the General Secretary, Tenzin Dorje of the Jamun Kanto Labrong, and the rest of the search party when they were at Serpu. Karmapa said that during the past year, before Jamgon Rinpoche was found, he had frequently seen in visions rainbows above the mountain in front of Serpu Monastery. Within the rainbow, he could see the third Jamgon Rinpoche, luminous with lights dissolving into each other from behind the mountain. This vision has often appeared in his dreams. Also, he has had visions of the Tibetan alphabet, indicating the names of the parents. <laughs> On August 4, 1996, after much searching according to the instructions of the Karmapa's letter, the new 4th Jamgun Rinpoche was found in Chushu, central Tibet, on August 12th. Karmapa bestowed a letter of recognition, and on August 25th of the same year, Karmapa wrote a proclamation letter, of which some of the excerpts are related here. In this world, the sole source of happiness and benefit is the precious teachings of the perfect Buddha. That these teachings remain, flourish, and spread depends solely upon those who are capable of upholding them. In the lands of India and Tibet, Many great beings holding high the incomparable blazing white parasol of the doctrine have come. The third Jamgon Kantro, Lodro Chuki Senge, has come again. This great friend of the teacher's doctrine and of all beings, even those who do not know him. He was born to the south of the glorious Karmapa's seat of Serpu, in Chushu district amidst villages, the circumstances of his birth being in accord with my description. I sing his praises and empower him to sit on the towering throne of Dharma. All beings should examine the legacy of his predecessors, respect him and pay him homage. Even though he has not reached adulthood, all should hold this supreme tulku in only the highest way. On September 1st, Jamgun Rinpoche visited the Karmapa at Serpu, and on the 2nd of September, the auspicious day of Labup Dupchen, Karmapa performed the hair-cutting ceremony and gave him his new name, Jamgun Lodro Chukinima. The following year, Karmapa granted him the oral transmission of mantras, sadhanas, and prayers, including the transmission of writing, and clothed him with the monastic robes which he wore for the first time.
Here is the Venerable Drupan Kempo Lodu Namgyal, who is a personal tutor to His Eminence. Here, Tenzin Dorje, the General Secretary to His Eminence Jamgun Kantol Rinpoche, tells us a little about the events surrounding the discovery of the new Jamgun Rinpoche. What is only let's say it's uh, south of Tsurpu monastery. He always see, he told me he had a vision, uh, he can hear a vision of a rainbow with, he see, he see that Jamgun Rinpoche. And uh, dissolved together, you know, and then he said he went back to the uh, south part of the city. And that's why he said this incarnation is the same place where we went first time to, to ask to go there. And even uh, by first day when his holiness gave me a letter, that time also uh, I went to see him. Uh, he said, oh, they are very good auspicious sign today when I give you a letter. Then I say, what are you going to do? So when I give you a letter, then you will be thunder, you know, only one thunder, and sunshine with the rain. And then as long as you see, today also there are one rainbow in the south part of the mountain. Another important tuku of the Karma Karju tradition is the 11th Pao Rinpoche, who was the first tuku to be recognized by the 17th Karmapa. In August 1998, Pao Rinpoche was on a walk with the monks of his monastery on the slopes of the mountain close to the monastery of Pao Nenang. The young Pao Rinpoche suddenly told his monks to dig in this particular spot. Because of his age, four years old at the time, the monks questioned him, wondering if this was really necessary and important, as the Tibetan soil is very rocky and any form of digging in Tibet is very difficult. Rinpoche insisted that the digging commence, thus ten monks proceeded to dig for quite some time the first day, and after the third day, at almost a meter and a half, some very special items were discovered. These items were treasures buried by a previous incarnation of Pao Rinpoche. These included a gold coin, a piece of silver, a piece of red coral, an agate stone, a white conch shell, and two other special stones. On the first day of digging, Pao Rinpoche told the lamas that they would find these stones. Several of his previous incarnations were great tertans of the Nyingmapa tradition. He is one of the Gyalwe Yapsi Dun, or the seven heart sons in the Karmapa Karma Kamsang lineage. The previous Paldin Pao Rinpoche is an emanation of the Buddha Amitabha. The Venerable Bokar Rinpoche, who tells us about Pao Rinpoche's discovery. <laughs> Uh, 
Here, Drupin Sewang Rinpoche tells us more about the discovery of the treasure, as well as some stories about the first meeting Paul Rinpoche had with Karmapa. Here he shows us the two special stones and a conch shell. One stone is connected to Guru Rinpoche and one to the Shakyamuni Buddha. One of the stones is in the shape of a bird. Paul Rinpoche wrapped the rest of the treasures in a red cloth and then put a white scarf around the cloth and offered it to the protector of his lineage, Mahakala Bernat Chen. He said the protectors would not be pleased to expose it now, so he placed them inside a locked glass case in the protector's shrine room. In the eighth month of the Tibetan wood pig year, 1995, the young reincarnation, together with Sewang Rinpoche and Nainang's monastery's administration, were granted the first audience at Surpu Monastery with His Holiness Karmapa. On the way there, when Paul Rinpoche first saw the monastery, he suddenly got up from the seat of his vehicle and said loudly, May Karmapa know. At that time, the young incarnation was only just over a year old. It was a great surprise for everyone with him. They reached the lower summer garden palace at Surpu, where the first reception was held. After they arrived at Surpu Monastery, he was seated on his historical throne. At that moment, he got up from the throne and said so loudly that everyone present there heard him, May Karmapa know. This was the previous seventh Dapsang Rinpoche, Ngaiden Chugi Nima. In 1992, at the age of 63, he passed away in Hong Kong. Here is the new eighth Dapsang Rinpoche, at the age of 15 months old, at his hair-cutting ceremony at Surpu on August 7, 1997. For centuries, the incarnations of the Dapsan Tukus have been recognized as the emanations of Gampopa by the Gyawa Karmapa, Sita Rinpoche, and Chugyur Lingpa. The previous incarnation of the Venerable Dapsang Rinpoche was a close disciple of the previous 16th Gyawa Karmapa, who wrote a long-life prayer for Dapsang Rinpoche which is as follows. You who guide the chariot of the teachings of the glorious Karmapa, heart of the practiced lineage, 
you who are the miraculous Vajra dance of Gampopa, intentionally appearing as a perfect Nirmanakaya, may your life be long. Now Karmapa performs the hair-cutting ritual where the little incarnate Tuku becomes a monk. The Tenchuk is being offered to the Karmapa. This ceremony represents the offering of the body, speech and mind of the Buddha. Many Karju monasteries are joining in the offering ceremony. A long life initiation will be performed later in the day. The new Dapsan Rinpoche and Drupan Rinpoche are returning to their main seat of Dilyak Gumpa in Kham. Dilyak Drupan Rinpoche tells us a little bit about the new Dapsan Rinpoche. Yeah, Dapsan. Conjunctive <laughs> The this is Dilyak Gumpa, the original seat and home of both the Venerable Dapsang Rinpoche and Dilyak Drupan Rinpoche. In 1990, the previous Dapsang Rinpoche traveled from Nepal back to Dilyak Gumpa, his original monastery in Kham, carrying with him many holy objects such as statues, ritual musical instruments, tonkas, silk brocade, and other items. 
Before leaving the monastery to return to Nepal, he told the monks there, When I return again, I will come from Hong Kong and won't be carrying anything. He lived up to this prediction by making his next appearance at his monastery as a small child. Not only was he not carrying anything, but this time he himself was being carried. Here the sacred black hat lama dances are being performed for this special occasion. Six monks from Dilyak Gumpa searched for over two months, finding over 300 babies born in the mouse year. A list of the names of all the possible candidates was brought back to the Karmapa. He said to search again, but this time in three groups of two people each. There was some confusion as it turned out that the names of the true Tuku's parents were not in the government lists as they had just arrived in that area. During the second search he was finally found and the Karmapa immediately knew he was the right one according to the letter he had written. The circumstances surrounding the baby's birth were exactly in accordance with his prediction letter. The new Tuku was only 10 months old when the first picture was taken at his birthplace in Kham. He was born on the third day of Sagadawa in 1996 in Zatushin, eastern Tibet. The family are poor nomads and the Tuku is the seventh son in the family of six older brothers. With the accompaniment of friends and lay people from Zatushin, the entourage arrived at Rinpoche's Dilyak Monastery in Kham, which presently has over 200 monks. Upon their arrival, everyone heard the celestial sounds of Tibetan ritual music that greeted them everywhere. This was quite astonishing because in fact no actual musicians were playing any instruments. <laughs> Here is the new fourth Dopo Shalri Rinpoche, who was recognized by His Holiness Karmapa in 1998. He is the first Tulku to be recognized by the Karmapa outside of Tibet. The previous third Dopo Shalri Rinpoche spent most of his life in meditation retreat at his She Gompa, high in the mountains of Dolpo on the Tibet-Nepal border. Before he died, due to his intense devotion to the previous Jamgung Kantra, he offered his entire monastery to him. Tenzin Dorje tells us more about this new Tulku, who will be living at Pulahari with Jamgung Kantra. incarnation, and then now he recognized uh, recently we brought him here from Tolpo. Kamapa recognized him. Kamapa gave uh, us a uh, uh, recognition for Shilu in end of 1996. And we sent uh, our two monks from here, like Chuk Gelsen and uh, Sonam Chapel, they went to Tolpo last year, 1998. We sent that photo mm -hmm. to show to Kamata. Mm -hmm. And Kamata decided, yeah, this is the his reincarnation. He said, so and so, father and mother, son, is the Vishiri Tulku. Why I have a responsibility of taking care of this Tulku's incarnation? Previous Shiri was born in Manam, you know. I think he passed away in 19, end of 1990. But he was a disciple of second Jambun Kumpu, Baldin Chinsi was his disciple. Mm -hmm. That's why he always feel very close connection with the Jambun Kumpu. And Shiri Rinpoche offered his monastery and all property, but he belonged in Tolpo. He asked Jambun Rinpoche to take care. That's why uh, just before he passed away, he requested Rinpoche and we take care of the, after he passed away, his cremation and everything. And also I built a small strip of Shira Rinpoche, I think you will see it in our um, golden strip. 
temple. You see? Now we found him. And the future, he can be a good friend of the Buddha, he can help for his activity, and then also for Buddha Dharma and Kamaka use lineage. And plus, he can help as much as for Jamaka. That's my wish. Each year on the 12th day of the Tibetan fourth month, Serpu Monastery holds its Tonka ceremony. This has been a tradition passed down through centuries. Here it is being seen, carried up the slopes for display. This new Tonka was recently designed and constructed by an American couple, Terrace and Leslie Temple, with the help of a Lhasa tent factory. Although this couple has been making Tonkas for many years, this is their first applique Tonka. It is over 10 stories high and weighs more than one ton. After raising funds, buying the silk, having some of it dyed in the right colors and designing, the whole process took over a year and a half to complete. After completion of this tanka, they made a second impressive three-story high Mahakala tanka at the Karmapa's request that is also unfolded annually just before Tibetan Losar. The Karmapa has now requested them to make two more large tankas when enough funds are raised. On the way to Lhasa from Surpu Monastery is the area of Tulung De Chincheng. Here we witness the annual horse racing festival. The horse racing festivals are traditional all over Tibet in the summer months. This is an enjoyable break from the generally difficult country life of most of the people. Generally the riders have had lots of experience and practice and have perfected their skills. They often perform amazing feats while riding a horse at a full gallop. But occasionally, as seen with this rider, not everyone can hang on so well and they end up biting the dust. We need companions with whom to tread our path. If we want to cross the river, we need a boatman. The boat would not move on its own. If we rely on wrong companions or friends, we can be led astray. So we want to find the right companions and travel together on the right path. That is the supreme Sangha. His Holiness the 17th Gawa Karmapa wrote a poem paying homage to all the wondrous lamas of the snow land of Tibet. It reads as follows, Shining like the glowing red clouds at sunrise, your dharma robes adorn the grace and beauty of your presence. Excelling even the majestic snowy peaks, I pay deep homage to you who heals the suffering of mind and deeds through the essence medicine which is the nectar of your amazing skillful means. Thank you.
Thank you.